we have breaking news out of Australia this evening as the FFA have sacked national team coach Graham Arnold after yet another disappointing World Cup group stage exit in Qatar. Now, the new man is about to be unveiled with most expecting overweight expat Aussie villain to be the new man in charge. Now, this will be his return home after many years of binging in Europe. Let's cross live to Sydney now for the announcement. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Uh, well, this is a very, very exciting day, not just for me, uh, but also for the country as we finally rid ourselves of Arnold's disappointing tactics and pathetic results. Uh, you know, we have a very, very proud sporting tradition in this country, and it's an honor to be handed the opportunity to continue that uh, and lead this team into the 2026 World Cup, where I will most likely uh, end up getting sacked after another disappointing group stage exit. Uh, now, do we have any questions? Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, Chaz Hogan, Australian journalist. Now, mate, next World Cup, it'll be 20 years since the great Gus Hiddink led a team beyond the group stage of the World Cup. Uh, now, should we be expecting you to end that drought? Yeah, look, mate, I mean, if there's one thing we love in this country, it's a good old long drought, isn't it? But, uh, you know, Aussie Gus managed to do it. So let's see if Aussie Villain can follow suit. Hi guys, I'm Aussie Villain and welcome to the Soccer Roos. This is very, very exciting for me. Uh, now, because it's a new series, we're straight off the top. We need to do the admin. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, like the video, please leave a comment. All that kind of stuff helps the YouTube algorithm. Um, but this is, uh, yeah, it's greatly appreciated if you can do that for me. But the plan here is to lead the team to the 2026 World Cup in North America. And we're not going to win it. Let's be honest. We've accepted that, I think, as Australians, that we're <laughs> probably never going to win a Soccer World Cup certainly in my lifetime but uh, we're going to see exactly how far we can go uh, now if we have a look here now the original plan here was uh, for the series was to take the team sort of from current point try and get to the Qatar World Cup and then go from there but unfortunately the way the game simmed it meant that it, it wasn't real life results so uh, we've, we've uh, altered that plan and now we're going to do a full World Cup cycle leading up to and going to hopefully anyway the World Cup in North America now we do are going to have the AFC Asian Cup. Now, the minimum expectation is to reach the final. That's that's a big minimum <laughs> expectation. Uh, we do have that upcoming, though. And, uh, well, we can see there that uh, everybody is... Uh is welcoming me and we'll, we'll we'll get everything set up here as uh, as we go uh now a couple of things i did we wanted to go through here let's start with uh the expectations here now we've just seen that obviously there's not too much uh too much going on on that uh, front just yet the nation uh now yeah i mean australian football has been in better places let's be honest we're currently ranked 47th in the world we'll see how high we can get that as we go here uh you can see a couple of the big players and uh the problem we're going to have potentially is we're going to sort of plan for four years in the future so some of these guys rudovitska for example 35 he's not going to be around at that point how old sainsbury now he's going to possibly be around 34 he might be moving on a little bit so we are going to have to sort of move it'll be a moving a moving target as we go here currently uh the captain is maddie ryan the vice captain is trent sainsbury and the key player is aaron moy who is uh, currently in china in real life so that's sort of where the nation stands now if you're wondering how we got on at the world cup well this is it here our uh, bottom of the group as we've come to uh to come to get used to but the disappointment here is that australia actually beat the netherlands uh two nil but then lost to cameroon which it's the most australian thing ever isn't it in terms of a football uh, or soccer uh, team uh that's exactly what you'd expect us to do go <laughs> go and beat uh, the netherlands and then lose to cameroon but anyway uh that's that's basically how uh, how the the tournament played out and somehow I've still managed to finish bottom of the group as well so excellent stuff uh honestly soccer you kill me uh now if we have a look at this is the team that went to the world cup now i haven't changed anything as of yet there's going to be there are going to be changes if we search by if we sort of sort by age here we can see i mean vukovic the goalkeeper is not going to be around moy at 36 is questionable beich at 36 is uh, unlikely matt uh, lecky and tommy urich i mean tommy urich is debatable anyway and then Sainsbury Ryan should be fine. Thomas, if he's good enough, should be fine. Bailey Wright, Mass, and Rogic at 34. You can see a lot of the key players, and even uh, Irvine at 33. They're, they're, they're going to be on that down. How is Ma uh, Mustafa Amini 29? That makes me feel so old. Uh, so there's a lot of these guys here. You can see that are going to be mid 
mid 30 ish by the time we get to the next world cup so th there is going to be a rebuilding job here as well which should be exciting as we go so uh the this is a team that went to the world cup so vukovic uh matt ryan will be the first choice goalkeeper almost certainly lawrence thomas i don't think i can pick him because he played for melbourne victory for so long uh i'm a sydney fc fan if you are new to the channel sainsbury good solid defender it's probably the best defender we have isn't he uh bailey right now he already lacks pace and he's 30 so whether or not, although he's got no pace to lose. Harry Sutar, jumping reach of 20. He's a lump, isn't he? And uh, seven goals and 16 appearances. He will probably be a big part of our defense. Uh, Nathaniel Atkinson, got to admit, don't know the name. Uh, he might be okay, though. Fran Karasic, he's a good player, isn't he? 26. He'll be right in his prime. Uh, Bayic, we already know, possibly won't be around. We'll need to find another left back. Dagenik at 28 will possibly be around, though he's at Columbus Crew now. Brad Smith, so much promise so many years ago. He'll be 32. See how the pace holds up with him, I suppose, and who else comes through. Cameron Devlin, we're familiar with him in the Queen of the South series. If you're watching that, uh, we are familiar with him. Riley McGree, now he's left Birmingham City, so we can afford to pick him again. I thought he'd be better, actually, if I'm being completely honest. Mas Luongo, um, looks like a very heavily photoshopped... Uh, <laughs> know of him there but anyway yeah at 34 he might be one that doesn't quite make it mustafa amini again whether he'll be around is a question martin boyle at 29 i mean a winger that relies on pace is he going to be around in four years that is questionable jackson irvine hopefully he'll be around uh still we'll see we'll just kind of see as we go won't we now moy 36 He's going to be the one, isn't he? If he is, he going to hold up for the next World Cup? Well, let's hope so. Tommy Rogic will possibly be around. He doesn't have that much pace about him anyway, which is maybe a good thing. Matthew Leckie at 35. Again, it's going to depend on how his pace holds up and who else is available is going to be the other thing, isn't it? Who comes through? Uh, Denny Juric, a name that, again, I'm not familiar with, but good to see we've got uh, someone at uh, Dinamo Zagreb that Croatian League, we brought so many players through for Australia back in the day, didn't it? So he looks like he could be useful-ish. Uh, Jamie McLaren, never a player I've rated, if I'm completely honest, but... Yeah, we'll see how he goes. And Tommy Urich will almost certainly not be around uh, at 35 years old in the, at the next World Cup. So that is, that's the team that we have now. Now what I'll do is I'll sort of play through. I'll show you the schedule in just a second. And we'll, we'll sort of figure out where we go and uh, what we need to do. Now if we look at the coaching staff, we have uh, beneath me, uh, Tony Vidmar is there. Love Tony Vidmar. Hopefully he'll be around. Renny Mullenstein is... Um, decent enough i suppose uh we've got john crawley as a goalkeeping coach hopefully we can find a little bit better i'm never fully convinced that how important the coaching staff is andrew clark he played for paramount of power back in the day didn't he just I'm making that up no he did i thought i recognized the name um not the best fitness coach but i think he's been around for a long time hasn't he uh alan mccall as a fitness coach has been around for a little while uh there were uh, this under 21s we'll probably move him up to the senior goalkeeping coach since he's better uh the manager of the under 20s is van egmond he's been around youth football for a long time hasn't he ivan jolic is uh is there as well nothing special and trevor morgan you know what as an under 19s manager good working with youngsters we'll see how he gets on but that is uh so that is our coaching staff we'll, well as i said we'll, we'll, we'll work with it and try and improve things as we go now if we look at the schedule what we'll do, I think, is we'll come back next time because we're currently just after the Winter World Cup. So we're uh, the 20th of December, 2022. We're going to have two friendlies uh, against Malaysia and Ecuador in March. And then we've got the AFC Asian Cup coming up. So we've got a friendly against South Korea. And then I think we'll get stuck into that. Um, if we look at our group, you can see it there. It is, where were we here? It's down the bottom. So it's going to be behind my head. Uh, so you can see all the other teams that have qualified, all the other groups there. If you want a little bit of a longer look, just give it a pause. And if we go and have a look at our group specifically, it's uh, ourselves, Iraq, North Korea, and Uzbekistan. Now, that's not the easiest. Iraq and Uzbekistan are decent. North Korea, unsurprisingly, is a bit of an unknown. But you'd like to think that we, well, we should be able to get out of that group. We've got to make the final or else we probably, we won't even get the chance to get to the World Cup. So we should be able to get out of that group and then we'll go from there and, uh, and see where that particular tournament takes us. But uh, yeah, anyway, let me know your feedback. If there's any Australians that aren't in that squad that you think should be there, let me know in the comments. We, you are all going to be my scouts on this one. And um, yeah, let me know how you think we'll get on this series. Will we will we actually be able to make the, the World Cup uh, qualify needing to make the final of this tournament? That's maybe a big question for us, isn't it? 
But so that's all for future times. Um, if, you, if you're looking forward to it, thumbs up. So as I said, subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you next time with my first ever Australian squad as we uh, go to Malaysia. And then we think we'd have one of those at home. Why would we go from Malaysia to Ecuador? Anyway, we'll be facing Malaysia and Ecuador and uh, see exactly what it is we have to work with. Until next time, take care.